pitch. So, I want to jog your thoughts a bit this morning. We're going through what you believe. Okay. And generally when people get up here, they talk about something that has recently happened to them or something that has inspired them or something that they're really passionate about. And it draw, they draw that connection to the table. Now I'm going to take you on a little bit of a tangent here today. I'm going to ask you your deep founded beliefs, not only in the table, but something that you've probably forgotten from a young, young age. So from everyone here, I want to see a show of hands. Who believes in dragons? See the kids, the kids got it. Okay, so I know it's a little bit of a stretch, but why did you stop believing in them? What happened? Did someone tell you, oh no, flying lizards couldn't exist? You know, big, big things that breathe fire. No. Some truths do get stretched to the word, but let's take it a step back. If you go over, who believes in dinosaurs? Yes? Oh, there's a lot more now. Okay. You've got fossils in museums, giant things, there's evidence lying around. Does that not make you think, okay, there could be giant lizards? Maybe. There's some that flew. Maybe. The fire breath thing still is a bit of a maybe. Okay. But let's, let's take it back a little bit more and look at where this disappeared to. And don't worry, I have a way of connecting these two, two theories. Del, if you can go to the next one. So if you look at um, the original word for dinosaur, it comes from a Greek word, dinos, which means terrible, and sauros, which means lizard. So you had dinos dinosaurus, terrible lizard, giant terrible lizard, okay? okay? And it changed in 1980, uh, sorry, 1842. They termed the word dinosaur. What was it called before that? I'll let you just take a guess. What did people call giant lizards before the word dinosaur was invented? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So now, those people who didn't believe in dragons are a little bit more, you know, they did maybe exist. Maybe like, not like you used to know them. Dinosaurs, dragons. Okay, going back another one, Dale, next slide. How did different cultures of almost, oh sorry, every culture independently have depictions of dinosaurs before they met? You had the Greeks, you had Norse, you had Egyptian mythology, Japanese mythology. All of these guys had depictions in their histories before they met up of diff different terrible and giant lizards. Okay? Yes, no? Okay. Now, that's all history that is somewhat supposed. We don't know. There's one record over here. But then we come to our book, the Bible. We have a document that has been proven again and again and again that is true. Every historian that tries to disprove the Bible ends up going, well, there's so many accounts of this being true. They can't dispute it, okay? So if we go and we look, um, uh, Dale, to the next slide, please. If we look, I'm going to go over two tables. They might be a bit small for you guys to see, but there was a Hebrew word, tannin, okay? And the plural word, tannin, which usually meant or translated as the word dragons. It did change um, to serpent or monster, um, but, the fl but the plural word of tan, you got changed to jackal. Now, some of these didn't make sense in the context they were in, so they would change the word from jackal to serpent or flying serpent in the old. In the old. But if you go back to the original Hebrew, it was translated as dragon. Dale, next slide, please. These are the references, like I said, they might be a bit small, but I'll just go through them quickly. Deuteronomy 32, verse 23, dragons. Nehemiah 2, verse 13, dragons. Job, Psalms. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, uh, Genesis, Exodus. All of these scriptures refer directly to the word dragons. Okay? I know I'm passionate about this. People give me odd looks. Stay with me. Those are just references to giant lizards. If you go to the next one. So, Dale, next slide. Oh, sorry, back one. There's two, two tables. Yes, you, can't, you probably can't tell the difference between them. The next one is, is something called... Fiery serpents, leviathans, things that breathe fire, 
okay, through different, different chapters, different books, different writers, all of these people talking about giant lizards. Okay? Now, we don't have a direct depiction of what happened to them. We do have some accounts of people slaying dragons. There is King Arthur's court where they had uh, dragon hunts and things in the old days where they used to find giant things. I personally, I think most of them died out when Noah came and there was a big flood. But that's where I am with that. Okay. Dale next. Yeah. So this is Bryce's area. You can see a small little notation in the corner there. I did not find this myself, but I like it, so I'm adopting it. This is my friend, the T-Rex. That, yeah. Everyone knows the T-Rex, and everyone's ever wondered why he has such chubby little arms. Very useful things for doing nothing. Okay? Has it ever made sense in any a evolution or God made God made creature why he has something so useless? No. Let's go across to his skeleton. See those little hands there with those little claws. It's fantastic little things for dinosaurs. Something that's got a very, very similar hand structure to the dinosaur is the ostrich. Okay? You can see there I've done both the... Uh, it was a bit blurred with the, with the shadow at the back there, so I've taken it off. And you can see those two little stubby arms again. Now, what did ostriches have? Wings. They were flightless birds, but they had wings. So wouldn't that make a T-Rex look more like this? Yes. Now if I ask you guys, who believes in dragons? It's a different story. Okay. So what I'm getting to over here, sorry, Dale, next slide, is what have I done to change your beliefs? In seven minutes, what have I done to change your beliefs? I've given you some facts, I've looked up some scripture, and I've just showed you my passion. Okay. And what has that done to change your beliefs? You started here going, no, dragons can't exist, fiery lizards in the sky, nah. Okay, now I've given you reasonable doubts, I've given you evidence, I've shown you physical proof, well not here, but on the slides. Okay. Going back to communion and the things that we learn with Jesus, what have you done to check your beliefs? Are you passionate about them to dig into the word? To open your Bible, be like, oh, okay, this is why we have communion. And we do a lot of lessons on why we have communion. Do we, do, we don't as much go into when we have communion. So we know as we get together every Sunday, we have communion together. But the instruction wasn't have communion once a week. The instruction was have communion when we get together as a family to praise the Lord. Communion should be had when you come over, when you pray with your friends, when you have life group. It should be every time you're thinking about the Lord. You sit down and you have your communion and you remember Him. Yes, we have it now. We sit down, we think about Jesus, we ask Him to forgive us for what, what He's done. But we make sure that we've also forgiven those who have wronged us so that we don't drink judgment upon ourselves. But like I said, it just took me seven minutes to convince you of something else. What has someone told you that has convinced you otherwise? When did you last go into your Bible and go, oh, I need to check this for myself? Because at the end of the day, it's not Uncle Brian's job to save you guys. It's you have to find your own salvation with fear and trembling. Because you can't go to the pearly gates one day and be like, oh, but he told me this. That's not going to fly. Okay. So today when we have the communion, I want us to not only think about what we've done and what sins we need forgiven, but also make a resolution to find our own salvation, to dig into the Word, to find the evidence that we need to convince ourselves, to make us passionate about the Word so that we can go to heaven one day. Because I really want to see all of you there. There's no one that I don't want to see there. So please, okay, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us, Lord. We just ask you to renew vigor within us and bring us closer to your word, Lord. Make us so passionate that every person that we walk down the street, we want to tell how wonderful you are and the amazing things that you've done for us, that you died for us, that you took all of our sin upon yourself so that we didn't have to. Lord, all that we have to do is ask for forgiveness. Lord, 
we thank you for, for the blessings and the abundance that you've done. And we, we just ask you to keep, keep giving it to us. In Jesus' name.